1955, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American from Chicago, was brutally murdered by white racists in Mississippi. When Emmett's body was recovered from the Tallahatchie River, it was hardly recognizable. In fact, Mississippi authorities wanted to keep the coffin nailed shut. But it was Emmett's mother, of all people, who demanded that it be opened so she could see her son's body. When it was, she saw that his tongue had been choked out. His nose was broken, and one of his eyeballs was lying on his cheek. And yet, Emmett's mother demanded that there be an open casket funeral. She said, Let the people see what I've seen. 50,000 people lined in the streets to enter the church and view his body. Parents brought their children. In the month following Till's murder, five out of six black radio preachers aired sermons about what had happened to the young boy. There was also nationwide television coverage of the trial of the suspected murderers. Dr. Clonora Hudson Weems, PhD, wrote a book about this incident entitled Emmett Till, The Sacrificial Lamb of the Civil Rights Movement. In it, she argues that Till's beating and death was the catalyst for the civil rights movement. She interviewed civil rights activists who testified that Till's murder motivated them to fight for the equality of African Americans. What is interesting is that today, most people credit Rosa Parks, the African American woman who refused to surrender her bus seat to a white man, as being the catalyst for the civil rights movement. Hudson Weems's research shows otherwise. Not only did the Rosa Parks incident occur 100 days after the Emmett Till incident, but when Parks was asked why she didn't give up her bus seat to the white man, she said, I thought about Emmett Till and I couldn't go back. His wasn't the only image to disturb society. Consider this quote from USA Today. When 900 students marched for freedom in Birmingham, Alabama on May 3, 1963, police attacked with dogs and fire hoses. Dramatic photos dominated the news. Demonstrations erupted in 186 cities. President John F. Kennedy called for the Civil Rights Act. The nation faced up to injustice because the pictures backed up the words, one senator said. If pictures help document these past injustices, shouldn't we do so with abortion? Indeed, we too need pictures to back up the words. 